All right, this tutorial is covering the uh, activity series lab. And uh, first, we're going to cover a couple basics from each part of the lab. So for part one, our purpose is to create a, a um, activity series list for some metals. So we have uh, lead, zinc, uh, copper, and silver, and magnesium. And we want to we want to organize this list uh, basically from most reactive to least. And what that means is mo the most reactive metal will be the easiest to oxidize. So some metals readily will lose their electrons, and others will re actually re prefer to retain the all of their electrons and stay in uh, their pure elemental form, such as gold. So you'll see that uh, some of these, one of these metals is like, is really easy to oxidize. So oxidizes very, very easily. So it's important to, um, that one of the main points here is to um, only consider uh, the ease of oxidation. Okay, so don't think of, uh, try not to consider the uh, the cation that it's reacting with. So for example, uh, in the next slide, you're going to see copper, uh, copper ions interacting with zinc, zinc metal. So it's important to think of it from the perspective of zinc metal only from the uh, the metal point of view okay so in this reaction you're gonna see uh, copper um, will actually gain two electrons from zinc and it, you'll see solid copper forming okay but this is not like the perspective that we're we're trying to consider we want to see how easy is it for zinc to lose its electrons okay we don't want to really look at the uh, reduction so zinc will become Zn2+. Plus. And we want to see like which one is the easiest one to oxidize. So the answer lies in the metal that basically the metal that reacted with every single one of the um, solutions that you add to it. And that's going to be the, the most reactive metal. Um, so we're actually going to we're actually going to split these into half reactions as well. So this is this is actually part more part of the the write up part, but if you look at this, copper went from a two plus to a zero charge. So we could actually like separate that from this reaction, and that's actually the uh, reduction ha part of the reaction. So we'll call it reduction. I'll write it right here. So our reduction half reaction, the copper gained two electrons. So in order to get that two plus to a zero it was plus two electrons. So on the reduction half reactions, you'll see electrons are on the reactant side like this, and it makes uh, Cu2 plus. Um, now the oxidation half, so there's another half reaction going on, and it's the oxidation of zinc. So zinc went from zero to a two plus. So for oxidation, you'll see electrons should appear on the product side because electrons are lost and reduction electrons are gained so they should appear on the reactant side so if we have uh, we'll show Zn so in other words oxidation is kinda like you could think of it as like a decomposition reaction so it's just Zn and then arrow Zn2 plus plus two electrons okay and then uh, so this shows oxidation that zinc lost two electrons so these are half these are called half reactions, what I split this into. Okay, and so these are just some of the terms. So I'm using some terms here, oxidation, 
okay, we want to look at it from the metal's point of view, not so much the solution that we add it, add it to. So this this will appear like a solid strip of zinc, okay, and this is going to be like a blue color solution that we add in a uh, in a uh, in a uh, dropper. Okay, so it's going to be like blue stuff that you add to it. Okay, we don't really want to think of the copper ions. We really want to like focus in on what's happening to the solid strips of metal in part one. Okay, and organize it from the most reactive strip of metal to the least reactive strip of metal. This part is more for uh, when we get to the uh, post-lab questions. Okay, so for part two, we want to create an activity series. or a list of from most reactive to least reactive that's what an activity series is uh, activity series list for halogens for uh, chlorine bromine iodine and uh, iodine and we can infer based on these results we can infer where um, F2 goes where fluorine gas goes Fluorine gas is uh, extremely dangerous, so we won't be working with that. Um, in fact, the uh, early chemists that tried to first synthesize pure fluorine, they actually like lost, they 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 actually like lost fingers and like crazy stuff. So fluorine is, is extremely dangerous. Fluorine gas. In fact, this one is is quite dangerous as well. Chlorine gas. So we'll be using the fume hood um, when we work with the chlorine gas. All right, so um, in this reaction, we want to we want to uh, from again from most reactive to least, but in this part, um, so these the halogens, these do not oxidize. These don't become like you don't see this. These do not oxidize. These reduce. These reduce really well. The halogens. So we want to consider. Um, the halogen's ability to be reduced, the halogen ease of reduction. So how well do these guys gain electrons? Okay, so who does it the best and who does it the worst? So, um, and you'll see that we'll be adding, so just a, a word, a quick side note on the terms. We're going to be adding halides to these. So these are halogens. These are halogens. And when they when they carry a charge, these are halides. So these are going to be in solution. These are dissolvable ions. So these are halides, uh, which are dissolved ions. Okay, and so we're going to be doing like reactions such as this. So if we have, uh, we'll be adding bro uh, bromide ions, and these will actually be in the form of NaBr. Okay, but when you read the uh, when you read the lab manual, um, don't think of this as NaBr. This right here is a spectator, and it does it does it's not going to do anything. So when you see this, you just have to think of these as in terms of this bromide ions. Okay, so we're working with nothing but net ionic equations in this lab. Another way to say that. So we're, we'll be adding this to this. And if there is a positive reaction, this will become reduced and become Cl minus. And the bromine will get, will uh, donate the electron to the uh, chlorine gas and become Br2 gas. So um, the appearance of this, this is going to show up as orange, okay? And we're going to use uh, mineral oil in a test tube because this is nonpolar. It's Br bonded to Br. There's no there's no dipole difference. There's no En difference, so there's no dipole. And so this is nonpolar, and it will show up in the mineral oil because mineral oil like all oils is is also nonpolar so mineral oil is nonpolar as well and it's it's this concept called like dissolves like so nonpolar solutes will dissolve in nonpolar solvents 
but if you try to mix a polar sol solute with a with a non-polar solvent, it doesn't work. That's like oil and water; the two don't mix. Okay, so that's why we use mineral oil is to trap the uh, the halogen because these are non-polar. Okay, so you can also write half reactions for these as well. Um, you would write so the bromine went from a minus to a zero. So the bromine, it actually lost an electron. So this, the bromine actually got oxidized. Um, I'm going to actually try to write the, the, just to keep it consistent with what I did here. Uh, the chlorine gets oxidized. Or the oxidation. So it, um, actually, I, uh, I just, uh, I just made a mistake here. So uh, chlorine, the chlorine gas, sorry, gets reduced. Okay, so our reduction reaction is chlorine, and uh, it gets electrons, just like how we have up here. So, and you'll see that we need to, we're, we're going to need to balance this too, so we need to put a 2 in front of the, chlor of the chloride ion. Okay, and the oxidation half reaction is uh, uh, bromide ions becoming bromine gas. So oxidation is Br minus arrow Br2 plus um, an electron. Okay, and then to keep this balanced, we need to put, because there's two bro, bro, uh, bromine atoms that form, so we have to put a 2 there. And then the electrons also need to balance. So we have a 2 minus on this side. So you have to put a 2 in front of the electron to show that the charge on both sides of this equation are also balanced. Okay, so those are half reactions. Uh, we went over a lot of terms on this slide, some background stuff. Halides. So remember this when you're reading the uh, lab manual, um, that these are halides, and we're reacting them with halogens with these. Okay, so on to the uh, next slide. So here's a here's like kind of what your observation is going to be. So you have like a strip of zinc, and it's going to be inside this that well. Okay, and then when you add uh, when you add copper, these are copper ions you'll be adding. It's in the form of uh, I believe copper nitrate is what what's actually in these little dropper bottles. Um, and so, but don't but again, just like the uh, previous example, don't think of it as intact. You're adding copper ions essentially, so you're not really adding nitrate. They're just spectators. They're not doing anything. Okay, and then you'll see. Um, as these guys start getting electrons, so this is the zinc, and it's gonna it's gonna give its electrons to the copper, and then you'll see solid copper forming as these start gaining electrons. Okay, so you'll see some copper forming there, and then these are our products. So the zinc will become charged now, instead of a solid metal. So the zinc will actually become dissolved in this little in the solution here, after you do this. Okay, so that's uh, um, we'll we'll cover this more when we uh, so you'll see that like some things are really easy to reduce. These end up being at the top of the reduction potential table, and you'll see some things are hard to reduce, which means they're actually easy to oxidize. So things that are things that are hard to reduce, and you know this is hard to reduce because it's negative. This means you you need to you actually need to supply a voltage for this to occur for this reaction to occur. So um, on in fluorine's case up here, this one actually gives off a voltage. So this happens spontaneously. It likes to gain electrons. This one you need to force them. So you have to like add a, add it usually by electricity in a process called electrolysis. So you could actually like force it. It's actually how batteries work. How they get recharged is uh, you're, you're like forcing the electrons to go back to the other side uh, when, you char like when you charge your phone. So things um, hard to reduce have a negative um, uh, voltage. And we'll be covering this in detail. We'll be covering this a lot. Um, it's one of the last things we cover this year, but it's a... Uh, electrochemistry but it's good to introduce now because we've 
we've covered um, redox already, redox reactions. So um, as you go up this list, it says um, it's easier and easier for these to reduce. So these are better and better oxidizing agents, okay, because they're easier and easier to reduce. Okay, and then as you go down, um, these are really hard to reduce. That means the reverse of these happen very easily. So if you actually like flip this to, to writing the oxidation half reaction. So all I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm just reversing this equation to show it in the oxidation point of view. This is actually very easy. But the reverse of that is very hard. And it actually, it actually the, the sign actually changes. It's actually plus 2.37 volts. OK, so um, and we'll, we'll cover this more uh, in the post lab as well. But I wanted to explain, uh, there's one more thing to explain. So it says, I love electrons. Because these this fluorine, and you'll see the halogens in general, um, if you know what you're looking at, you're actually looking at the results of the lab. So let's skip the slide here. So, um, okay, so a positive test for part two. So here's the here's the reaction that we'll be testing. We'll be adding bromide ions to chlorine gas. Okay, will there be a reaction? Question mark. Okay, so if there is a reaction, this will be your product. It will be uh, Cl minus plus Br2 gas. And we'll have to balance this. So put, put a P2 there and a 2 there. Okay, so does this happen? Okay, or is it no reaction? So um, if there is a reaction, so this this is what I just wrote up there, then you'll actually see. So this, the chlorine here is yellow, and this is orange. This right here is the mineral layer. And it's less dense than water, so it rises to the top. This is the water in the test tube. Okay. And so you'll see, um, this is colorless, the bromide ions. This is colorless. So you'll see it go from yellow to orange here if there is a reaction. If there's no reaction, this doesn't form, so you won't see orange color in the mineral oil. So the bromine is orange. And you'll see orange here. So this is bromine gas. That's what's in there. So, um, and the reason we know a reaction happened is because a product form, so bromine, which is orange, shows up here. So that's how we know that a reaction actually happened. If there is no reaction for this, okay, then this doesn't happen. So there's like a big X. So this doesn't occur. Okay, so, and again, this is yellow. The chlorine is yellow. So the mineral oil shows chlorine gas, which is a reactant, is showing up in the mineral oil. Um, on If there is a reaction, the product will show up. in the mineral oil. Okay, so you're seeing this is our reaction and then this is what you actually see. So in the reaction, um, th this is our this is our reactant and that's what you actually see in the mineral oil. So nothing happened in other words. You still see the reactant there. So that's how you check to see if there's a, a result showing. Iodine is the other halogen and that one will show up purple if iodine if iodine forms so that's it that's our uh, the end of the tutorial